I have concluded in my 30 years of research that the human race is indeed a hybrid race. The evidence is literally overwhelming. And if you dig into it and you study it and you evaluate it seriously, you reach the same conclusions. Every major religious philosophy in our history on every part of this planet whether it's in Europe, whether it's Christianity, whether it's Buddhism, whether it's Hinduism, every major human religious endeavor has told the basic same story. The human race is a hybrid race. We have been created here. We were seeded here. And we have been genetically manipulated here from the very beginning of our recorded history. And that genetic manipulation has never ceased. It is still going on, as Cecilia likes to say, even as we speak. So, I reached that conclusion and I will not argue with anybody about it. I simply say to you, look at the evidence. Apparently, this seems to be what has happened. Several hundred thousand years ago, an intelligent race from somewhere else out there came by the planet, knew of the planet, stopped at the planet and found a developing form of life here. Now there are theories that the original seeding itself was done by an intelligent race from other places. But some of the theories have stated that this advanced intelligence was on an excursion, a trip, and they stopped off here and found a developing form of life and decided to manipulate that developing form of life into a higher form. And they've been involved in that off and on, but continually, for at least a hundred thousand years. When I studied anthropology some years ago, I always wondered why poor old Neanderthal suddenly disappeared in terms of time Oh, a few centuries. And this new form, completely new form, which we call Cro-Magnon, appeared. What happened to poor old Neanderthal? Who is Cro-Magnon? Well, look around the room. You'll see Cro-Magnon here right, right today. But in terms of geology, in terms of anthropology, in terms of evolutionary theory, none of that seemed to make a lot of sense. You don't have evolution working that fast. Then there were other little curious things taking place. Why, about 5,000 BC in Sumer, did all kinds of things happen at once? A literal eruption of civilization taking place in the Euphrates and Tigris and Euphrates valleys. I mean civilization blossomed and bloomed almost overnight. The people were taught, or they learned, agriculture, irrigation, they built cities, they knew how to plant farms, they knew how to harvest, they knew how to develop intricate governmental systems, they developed a military idea, they developed a very intricate theological and philosophical philosophy. And where did this all happen? Why did it all happen literally overnight? Well, Zechariah Sitchin, in his absolutely monumental work, clearly has the answer. In the great Sumerian tablets, in the cuneiform tablets, which preserve the complete history of the Sumerian people, the evidence is all there. Sitchin is probably one of about 10 people on the planet who can sit down and read cuneiform tablets like you and I read the morning paper. The Sumerians told us how it happened, how it came to be, where they got the knowledge, who taught them the knowledge, and this fits, and I tell you it does, fit perfectly with every other story, myth, legend, history of every people on this entire planet. The human race is a hybrid, we were seated here, and we have had what I like to call an intimate interrelationship with high technology, advanced intelligence, for hundreds of thousands of years. Now the crucial thing is that it's still going on. It hasn't stopped. 
they are still involved and the big question has been for many of us is who the hell are they and what are they doing with us which ties in perfectly with the ancient philosophical questions that each and every one of us has asked who are we who are we how did we come to be here what are we here for and where are we going and this is if you remember from your own teachings education in school or church the basic questions that human beings have been asking since the beginning of time who are we why are we here and where are we going and now in the last 25 maybe 50 years enough people on this planet have seen enough evidence they have had literally some of the facts and some of the evidence rubbed on their nose and the world the people of the planet are slowly beginning to pay attention and that to me is the part that the gratifying part which has kept me involved in this and kept me committed in my small way to bring some of this information out not to preach to you not to have a crusade of any kind but simply to tell you that you are a special species carpenter from Galilee tried to explain it. Krishna tried to explain it. Mohammed tried to, ex to tell the story. Uh, Zoroaster tried to tell the same basic story. The Buddha even tried. Why is it that it's taken us so long to begin to grasp a little of the reality of who we are, why we're here, and what's going on? Well, my commitment to this thing has been growing over the years, and I, I will tell you that I'm involved in it, I'm committed to it, because I think that time is running out. I don't think it's going to be much longer before you see most of the answers. And the reason I share that with you is that I'm not trying to frighten you. And I, again, I'm not trying to preach or proselytize. I'm not trying to lead you in any direction. But I'm trying to say to you that in the next very few short years, you're going to be seeing things and you're going to be experiencing things that are going to literally change your life in ways you have never dreamed or imagined. You are going to learn who you are. You're going to find out why you're here and you're going to find out where you're going.